Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki LaRose. It is officially wedding season. So I thought in this video, I would share a perfect, easy look that you can wear as a wedding guest. But before we get into that look, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. To start this look, I'm actually going to put some body shimmer on just to kind of get out of the way and that way it has time to totally dry down as I'm doing my makeup. For that, I'll be using the Ella Luz Liquid Bronzer in the shade Superstar Shimmer. This I got this actually recently and it's so beautiful on. So I'm just gonna get my, I'm gonna go in there and just get my arms and give them like a little, little more color and tons of glow. And this is something that I would definitely do if I was actually attending a wedding. It's just like that little extra step that just, you know, gives you like that beautiful, healthy glow to your skin. And So next I'm going to start my eye makeup and I will be grabbing my foundation, which I'll be using later on for the rest of my makeup. And I'll be using just a little bit of this to blend on top of my eyelids before I go on with my eyeshadow base, like my primer. And then taking a damp beauty sponge. This one's from Tarte. And I'm just going to take my foundation, whatever foundation you're going to use for this kind of look, all over my eyelid. And I'm carefully avoiding my eyebrows, which are already done. I talk about that all the time. I've done them off camera because it saves me a lot, saves the viewer a lot of time as well, because it takes me a long time to do my brows and they're just, you know, just kind of a boring thing to watch in my opinion. But so I'm taking that foundation just all over. And that way when I go in later on, once my eye makeup is done, it's just gonna be a really seamless blend when I'm applying my foundation. And I don't have to worry about there being any gaps between where my eye makeup has ended and where I'm trying to blend my foundation into it. Like it's just gonna be nice and seamless. So this is a really great tip if you struggle with, you know, your eyeshadow and your the rest of your face makeup blending together try this technique it works every time so just a really small amount on this side as well and i'm just tapping it into my eye and around my temple and you can see that i'm bringing it you know slightly down too towards my eye like under my eye and then it really like along the side of my nose all in my tear duct. Make sure you get your tear duct. So now once that is on, and I'll make sure that I tell you guys once again why I chose this foundation in particular, the Dior one, which if you, you know, you watch my YouTube channel or you follow me on Instagram, you already know that I love this foundation, but I'll make sure I tell you why I chose this foundation for another tutorial. Because I know I've shown it in so many of my tutorials at this point, but Moving on, I'm gonna grab my eyeshadow base. This one's from NARS. It's the Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base, and this is in the shade Medium. It's a very light skin tone. It just looks like concealer, basically. This is not my product, so I'm going to just squeeze out a little bit onto my painter's palette. I don't need a ton of it. And then using a 145 Concealer Blender Brush from Zueva, I'm gonna tap into my NARS Eyeshadow Primer. And just, you know, no really technique needed. Just blending this on top of my eyelid. And since this is a lighter color than the rest of my skin, and it is more of like a concealer type shade, it's going to help to, even more so, even on top of that foundation that we already put on, it's just going to have to really brighten my overall eyelid cancel out any dark pigmentation that I have so you don't see like my veins underneath and my shadows when I put them on top they're just going to be more pigmented and they're going to be more true to their color because I'm starting with a really nice blank canvas so this is why I always do eyeshadow bases and primers and typically want to give my eyelid coverage and brightness because it helps to just cancel out that pigmentation which a lot of us have pigmentation on our eyelids so it just helps a lot. So just tapping that all over. And since I want my eyeshadow to really last all day and I do have very oily skin and you know, in theory, I'm a guest at a wedding and I want my makeup to look good from beginning till the very end when you're dancing and 
you know, it's the end of the night and you don't wanna look like your makeup's just destroyed. So I wanna make sure that I take the time and do the steps to make sure my makeup lasts all day, even though this is not like a bridal look. This is not meant to be like a long lasting bridal makeup. If you're a guest at a wedding, you still want your makeup to look good from the moment you get there to the very end when you're walking out with your shoes off. So I'm gonna grab a pressed powder and the same as a wave of brush. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this Kosas um, feathery cloud set powder. And I'll actually be using this later on as well. But just a small, thin layer. <laughs> this is one extra step that is so smart to do. Like I said, if you really want your eyeshadow to stay put all day and be like cry proof and budge proof and sweat proof, whatever the case is, this is gonna really help to lock it in and be a nice secure base. When you put your powder eyeshadows on top, they have something to just really lay smoothly on top of. Moving on to my eyeshadow palette, I'll be using the one of my favorite palettes in general. Like this palette, ever since I got it, has been such a staple. It's so beautiful. The palette is just, it's such great quality and it's only $14. So I can't speak highly enough about this palette from ColourPop. It's the Nude Mood Palette. And it's just, it's like all those really pretty romantic neutrals. This is obviously like, it would be a great bridal eyeshadow palette as well, but it's also a great wedding guest palette. And I'll tell you why. I'm gonna focus on just these two really neutral shades right here. I'm just going to blend those into my crease and just create a really soft, very understated wedding guest makeup look. Taking a Morphe brush, this is the Morphe collaboration with Makeup by Ariel. I'll be dipping into that first shade. This is Bare to Wear. And since this doesn't have a mirror, I'm gonna have to switch back to this guy. And this is just such a nice neutral shade. It's not gonna take a ton of skill. Like there's not a lot of skill involved with this makeup look. I'm just gonna warn you guys. This makeup look, everything I've chosen and the techniques I'm gonna show you, I wanted them to be very geared towards like whether you're a pro or whether you're just, you know, don't know what to do or like what to pull when you're a guest at a wedding and you don't even know the first thing involved with like doing your own makeup. I want this to be very like beginner friendly, advanced, you name it. Like anybody could do this look. So just very loosely blending this all over my crease, making sure I get all across it in a windshield wiper motion, which, you know, is easy. Like anybody can do this. You do not have to be some master at blending to be able to achieve this eye makeup look that I'm gonna show you guys. It's just gonna help to, you know, bring out our eye shape and define our crease in a very soft, very subtle way. And it's nice and neutral too. So, you know, you can wear this with, with anything you're wearing like clothing wise or lipstick wise or blush wise. So. That's also the reason why it shows this palette. It's just a really nice neutral palette. Okay, one more layer, because I like to really layer this one up and just build it up a teeny bit more than it initially shows up. Okay, first shade is done. Now I'm gonna to switch to a smaller blending brush. This one is a 26 brush from Sephora. I just got this brush. I'm so excited to use it. I've heard great things about it. It's just a nice fluffy, but kind of dense blending brush. And now I'll be dipping into Au Naturel. And with this shade, I'm not gonna blend it everywhere. I'm gonna focus it more on the outer portion of my eye, going about halfway across. And I'm being more light-handed with this one too. I'm not pressing it down onto my eyelid. I'm just kind of being more light-handed, like I said, and, and not applying too much pressure because I want control over where this shadow is going to end up. And you know, if you're pushing down too hard on your eyelid with a shadow, especially a, a slightly darker one, you lose control over where that shadow ends up going. 
So I want to keep it on mainly the outer portion of my crease and then halfway across. Next, switching to another small blending brush. This one's from the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill collaboration. This is the JH33 brush. I'm gonna take just a small amount of this Bluffin color and just work it in my tear duct. Well, my tear duct and then just a bit over my eyelid. And this color is really, really pigmented. Okay, so now that is on and it's nice and brightened. I'm gonna go in with my next shadow. I'll be putting this away for a second and I'm gonna be grabbing the Bodyography Off the Hook Glitter Pigment. These are phenomenal pigments. Like they're so beautiful on and this shade in particular is just a beautiful, kind of like a bronzy champagne tone. It's very neutral, looks good with anything. And to me, these look the best when they're applied with their, your fingertip. I do have long nails, so this might be a struggle for me. So taking that on my fingertip, I'm going to pat it onto my eyelid. And then I'm gonna grab one of my blending brushes, the Sephora 26 brush. I'm going to just diffuse it a little bit. If this were any other themed makeup tutorial on my channel, I would go crazy with this pressed pigment. And I would be packing it on right now and making it super intense because I just love the look of it. So it's actually really hard to stop myself from doing that. But since this look is for a wedding guest, like a guest of a wedding, you don't want your makeup to be a showstopper. You want it to be beautiful and romantic and, and definitely like appropriate for where you're going like you want to be dressy but you don't want to be taking away the focus from the bride so it's just something to always have in the back of your mind when you're doing your makeup as a guest you don't want to steal the show and you definitely don't want to look like you're trying to steal the show so keeping it just not too heavy just using a small amount Just so it's nice and soft and subtle. Like it's there and it's beautiful, but it's not like you don't look like you're trying to, you know, outdo the bride. That's never a good look. Don't do that. Moving into eyeliner, I'll be using the Caviar Stick Eye Color in Cacao. This one's from Laura Mercier, and this is just a nice, deep, kind of shimmery brown. It's so pretty. So I'm gonna start this on the outer portion of my eyelid along the top lash line. These are a little bit on the messy side, so you don't have as much control with them as you would like a thin pencil, since they are like more of a, a thick pencil. You have to be a little more careful, but I'm taking on the outer portion of my eye specifically and just kind of smudging it and softening it. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that side. I'm gonna let it kind of dry down a little bit and move on to this eye. So I'm really just applying it on that outer, very outer portion of my eye on the top and the bottom. And with this application, like where it's placed, it's giving us like, it's giving us the feeling of a wing without actually being a dramatic wing liner. But what it's doing is it's still like pulling my eyes out and elongating them, which is very flattering. I'm gonna go back to my nude mood palette and just dip in very, just a small amount with that same pencil brush, I'm gonna dip into the color Moody. So I'm just gonna use this to set that caviar cream stick liner. And just to remind you, because that liner was more on the creamy side, it would definitely run if you were to wear it all day without setting it. So this is why I'm going in with that brown eyeshadow and just layering it on top. Next, I'm gonna tight line my top lash line on the very inside of my lash line with the Makeup by Mario. This is the Master Pigment Pro Pencil in the Perfect Brown. 
These pencils are super long wearing, so I know if I use this, it's not gonna run down my face throughout the day. It's gonna stay put for the most part. It's not like completely waterproof, but it is very long wearing and definitely heat and humidity resistant. Okay, let me give my eyes a second to chill out because that usually makes my eyes water quite a bit. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna start a little bit of my skin prep. My skin is already prepped off camera. And I already have my serums and my moisturizers on. But I am going to show you a really important step, and I've talked about this many times before on my channel. This is the Super Gloop Glow Screen in SPF 40. If you're going to an outdoor wedding, which most of them are outdoors for the most part, you know, you're out in the sun, there's not much shade, you don't know what the elements are going to be, so it's very important to use a sunscreen, of course. So I love this one because it's going to give me a nice, beautiful, healthy glow underneath my foundation. So I'll be taking some of this. and just applying it all over. Okay, so my skin is nice and protected and glowing and whatever I have left over, I'm gonna just pop it on the top of my hands. Next, I'll be moving on to a primer. And if you guys watch my channel, you'll definitely, you know, you know that I don't love primers. I'm not like the biggest diehard fan of primers. I have them in my professional makeup kit. I have them in my personal makeup kit because there's always a time and a place for them. And this is definitely the time where you'd wanna bust out a nice primer, something that's going to give your skin like a really smooth airbrushed finish because you're taking pictures. You're also in person with a lot of people and you're seeing people up close and you wanna have like just like that extra little smoothing or, you know, product that's gonna make your skin and your makeup last all day. Because like I said, even though you're not the bride and you don't need your makeup to be you know, bulletproof, you still, as a guest at a wedding, you still wanna look nice from the moment you walk in to the moment that you leave at the end of the night. So I'll be using the Shiseido Synchro Skin Soft Blurring Primer. And this does just that. It does give you a nice blurring effect, but I don't need a ton of it. And I'm not gonna use this on my entire face. I'm just gonna focus it on the center of my face. I'm not taking it all over. I don't need to have it along my jawline. I'm just keeping it, you know, pretty much where I have most of my pores, which is the T-zone of my skin. So definitely along the side of my nose, especially. On my chin. And that's it. That's all you need. You do not need to overdo it with primer. The more you put on, the better chance it's going to have of it pilling, like lifting up as you're applying other products, which is never good. It's such a nightmare to try to fix that. But anyway, I'm going to go back to my eyes now since my eyes have stopped watering from applying that waterline eyeliner. And I'll be using the NARS Climax Mascara. This is my mascara, so I'll be directly applying it with the wand. And I'm only gonna do a very thin layer of this to start. Because as a guest at a wedding, I'm, this is definitely the time where I would take the time to bust out some false lashes and apply them. So I just wanna have a little base layer of mascara. So my false lashes have something to like, it just creates a better shelf for them to lay on top of. And for lashes, I'll be using a pair of Ardell Demi Wispies. I love these lashes. If I'm gonna do a strip lash, this is the kind of lash that I gravitate towards. They're very inexpensive. You can find them like, let's say you're in a pinch and you don't have lashes on you and you're on your way to a wedding. You could stop by like any drugstore and pick these up and you're done but I will be taking them and cutting them in half. So taking my lash, I'm gonna pop on the top of my hand so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna cut the outer portion. So this is what I'm, I'm left with after trimming them down. And then grabbing the Ardell Lash Grip Clear Brush On Eyelash Glue. This is one of my favorites. I'm just gonna run this along my false lash strip and since these are mine i can blow on them and dry the glue down another reason too why i i really recommend just cutting your lashes in half especially if you're attending a wedding and you just 
you don't have like a ton of skill or you don't have time to get your makeup done professionally and you're doing it yourself, this is an easy way to apply false lashes where you, know, you don't have to worry about the corners, like the outer corners lifting on either side. And it just feels so much more comfortable and they're so much easier to apply than a full strip, which is could be very intimidating depending on like what your skill level is. Moving on to foundation, now that my eyes are done for the most part, I'm gonna go back and finish my bottom lash line once the rest of my makeup is on, but grabbing one of my all-time favorite foundations, and I know I've used this one so many times, you guys are probably really tired of seeing it and, and bored, but the reason why I grabbed this one specifically is because it is a very long wearing foundation. It's water resistant, it's sweat and humidity resistant, and again, I mean, those are things you want to think about when you're attending a wedding and especially if it's warmer outside or if you're at like a, you know, a destination wedding, like on the beach or it's just hot and humid or you just want it to stay on all day long through tears and dancing and all those activities. This is why I chose this foundation because this foundation will not fail you. It never fails me. It's just so pretty. And also another reason why I love it is because in person, like if you're wearing this foundation in person, like not just on Instagram or in photos or on video, like I am right now in person, this foundation just looks like skin. It's just beautiful. So, you know, when you're around a bunch of people and you're, they're up close talking to you, you're not going to feel self-conscious thinking, Mm, I have a lot of makeup on, like I have a lot of foundation on, and I don't want them to like be judging me. It still looks like skin. So all that to say, this foundation is great for so many reasons. And it's just one that's going to last all day, all night, and look just beautiful on the skin. I wear the shade 2W, which has more of a warm like olive undertone to it. Helps to really even out my face with the rest of my body since I'm more tan on the rest of my body. And I'm using a Sephora 56 foundation brush for this. I'm gonna blend down my neck. You've probably noticed a huge pimple on my chin. I'll cover that in a second. It's funny that it's there too, because I feel like everyone that I know, anytime they've had a big event or like somewhere to go that's important, like a wedding, that's like the day that a pimple is gonna show up on your face, like front and center. And around my nose, like this area of my face, where I have a lot more redness, I'm going to tap in that product. So that way I get a little more coverage which is where I need it. <laughs> now, if I didn't have that glow screen sunscreen underneath, this foundation would look a lot more satin slash, it would teeter more on like the matte side, but since it does, ha since I do have that glowy sunscreen underneath, it's going to look a lot more glowy than it actually would. So if you don't want it to look this glowy, just Use a regular sunscreen. Don't opt for the glowy one that I used. Moving on to concealer, I'll be using the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer in Light. And this one is mine, so I'm going to directly apply it with the applicator. Bring it all the way back towards my temple. That's gonna give, help give my face a little lift up and a little like, you know, little sculpted effect. I do feel like with this concealer, it's not, it doesn't quite give me the amount of coverage that I want. I mean, this might be, this is probably great for so, so many people that don't want like, you know, really heavy concealer look. It does feel very lightweight, but Personal preference, I, I love like a good full coverage concealer because I know it's gonna really cover my dark circles and it's gonna brighten and it's gonna give me what I want. 
This is still beautiful. I just have to kind of layer it a little bit. I'm going to highlight the top of my chin. And I'm going to go over the center of my forehead a little more with this concealer. Just to bring some light in the center of my forehead. And brighten that area of my face. Okay, concealer's on. I'm going to go back to my Tarte Beauty Sponge and very, very lightly tap it in. And the reason for that is because, like I say all the time, I need, I need to maintain the coverage under my eye. And if I went in and I was too aggressive when I was, when I'm blending it with my beauty sponge, like if I used too much pressure on my skin, I was pushing it down too hard. The harder you push down, the more product it's going to take with it. So if you don't want to lose that coverage, if you're just trying to keep it and maintain it, but lightly blend it, you want to use very light pressure. If you feel like you maybe applied too much concealer, if you're, you know, if you're at home and you're like, oh, I put way too much concealer on, then that's actually a great time to really apply a lot of pressure with your beauty sponge because that will help to pick up that excess product that you maybe on accident applied. Now, before I go in and blend out the rest of it and really make sure it's like set and blended down, I want to let it sit and self set, which I talk about all the time. This is a very wet concealer and I want to have time to dry down and maintain that coverage before I go in and actually set it. So moving on, I'm going to start my contour slash cream bronzer. I'll be using the Milk Makeup. This is the matte bronzer stick um, in Baked. I think that's the color of this. And this is a really easy to apply cream bronzer. Like if you, I talk about this all the time, like if you don't have a lot of like blending skill or you know, just skill in general with contour products, this is a really nice one. This is mine, so I'm gonna directly apply it to my skin. I grab one of my favorite brushes. I use this all the time. This is like, this never leaves my side. It's the Real Techniques Contour Brush. It's the 206 contour brush, I believe. My, the number is getting kind of rubbed off because it's very well loved. I'm gonna to start to stipple it in. And the more you use like pressing, like tapping and pressing and stippling motions and techniques with your makeup application, the longer it's going to last. So like I said, you know, if I'm a guest at a wedding, I want my makeup to look good all day and all night. So I'm going to really press my products in and really make them stick. I am going to do my jawline. So in photos, as a wedding guest, I have a nice like chiseled, chiseled and sculpted jaw. And I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. This one is another Real Techniques brush. This is, this was actually from a set. I use this in my drugstore makeup tutorial, but this is the medium shadow brush. It's number is 308. I'm gonna take this and now I'm going to dip it in to that milk bronzing stick and apply it to my nose. And when I'm contouring my nose, I like to start at the bottom portion of it, cut across the tip, and then whatever's left over on my brush, I'll bring up. I'm going to take a little bit and cut it across the bridge. So give it more of a natural effect rather than a like straight lines down your nose kind of look. And I'm going to let that hang out for a second. I'm going to take the excess and 
bring it right under the bottom of my lip. And start to blend this out. And I'm gonna go right back to my beauty sponge from Tarte and I'm just going to just go along the side of my nose one more time just to kind of melt it into that cream contour that we just applied. Okay, so now I'm going to go and officially blend my under eye. But really I'm just kind of tapping it in even more and I'm gonna leave it alone one more time. I'm gonna move on to my cream blush. I'll be using the Nude Envy Cream Blush in the color Passion. This is just a beautiful, rosy tone, like romantic shade. So I'm gonna take my brush. This one is from Profusion. It's the Profusion Buffing Foundation brush. This came in a set as well, and you might recognize it. It's from my drugstore makeup tutorial. I love these brushes. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that cream, like a small amount. And this time I am gonna work this on the top of my hand and then apply it to my cheeks. I'm just stamping it on. I'm not buffing it. I'm not like disrupting all that makeup that I have underneath. I'm just pressing it onto my cheeks and really, really stamping it on. That way it's it's like locking down the rest of my makeup and it's just not gonna move. It's not it's not gonna muddy up the rest of the products that I have underneath. It's just gonna sit really nice and flawlessly on top if you use this kind of technique. Like this kind of motion is absolutely the way to go. And I like to work it up towards my temple. I think it looks really pretty and healthy to have a little wash of color around here, like to bring it high up. It's another thing I talk about all the time. I love my blush to be further up than you would expect it to go. So whatever's left over, I'm, I'm bringing it along the side of my temple. And that way, you know, as a wedding guest, I just look like I have a really healthy wash of color. Like, like I took a run, a little jog, and it gave me like that beautiful, like healthy amount of natural color. Okay, so blush is on. Now we're gonna finally go in with powder to set our under eye concealer. And I'm gonna go back to that Kosas Feathery Cloud Set Powder. So actually it's the Cloud Set is the name of the powder and then Feathery is the name of this shade. So it's a, just a nice light neutral shade. I am gonna use that same um, Tarte Beauty Sponge. But I'm gonna flip it and use that flat end that's nice and clean. In my opinion, funny story about these powders, I, I did receive them from the brand, which was so nice of them. And when I first tried them out, to be totally honest, I did not love them. That they sat around and I just, they I did, they weren't for me. Like I, they just didn't, they didn't work well for my skin. But one day I decided to bust them out again and try them out. And instead of applying them with a brush, like I had done previously when I was trying them out, Instead, I used a damp beauty sponge or damp beauty blender and the difference was like night and day. I think they go on so beautifully and so like soft focused if you apply it with a damp sponge. So that's what I'm gonna be doing and pressing this under my eyes. And since this shade is definitely lighter than the rest of my skin tone, it's gonna help to brighten my under eyes even more all while setting it. And as usual, I am taking this along the side of my nose as well. And I'm gonna take it on the top of my chin where I highlighted previously. And then whatever's left over, I'm going to press in the center of my forehead where I also had highlighted with that concealer. 
And now I'm gonna take a little bit of the Laura Mercier translucent powder, and I'm gonna do a very light wash of this to set my entire face. Just a little bit along the apples where I tend to get really shiny along the side of the nose. But it's a very thin layer. It's not like a heavy layer of this powder. It's a sheer layer, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna totally dull down the rest of our makeup, but it is gonna do its thing. It's gonna help to lock our makeup down and keep it in place all day. But to bring back our cream bronzer and like the intensity of it, I'm going to also set it with a powder bronzer. I love this bronzer. It's a bronzing duo. It's the medium to deep bronzer duo from Jouer in the shades Sunkissed and Sunset. I'm probably gonna mix the two together. And with a large fluffy brush from NARS, I'm gonna dip into both of these shades. These do have a luminosity to them, like they have a little bit of like a glowy look to them. Along the side of my cheeks. And then using the lightest shade, I'm gonna dust this along my jaw. And now that our powders are on, I'm gonna go back to our cream blush in Passion. And with a small, really, really small amount, I'm gonna work that back on the top of my hand. And this is gonna be our round two layer of blush. That way we know that like blush, for example, is one of the first things that just, it just kind of disappears off your skin throughout the day, especially if you have a long day ahead of you. I'm gonna go back in with one more thin layer and press it on. And it is okay to layer a cream blush on top of powdered skin, especially in this case, because we did use such a thin layer of powder. But you have to be careful. You have to be really mindful of how you're applying it. You don't wanna be buffing it and lifting it up. You wanna press it in. If you press it and you use like tapping, stippling motions, then it is totally fine to layer cream on top of powder. Next, I'll be highlighting using the Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm Face Palette. I know this is hard to find. It's been sold out like at Sephora and I believe on her website it's sold out as well, but I know I'm sure it's gonna come back. So don't hate me if you can't get it yet, but if you can get it, definitely buy it because this palette is gorgeous. I'm gonna mix my brush into both these glowy shades up top. And this brush is from the Makeup by Ariel collection with uh, Morphe. And I'm gonna hit the top of my nose and the very tip of my nose. Leaving the center of my nose, like the bridge of my nose, without highlighter so we have balance. And then just along the top of my cheek. And then whatever's left over, I'm gonna lightly drag across the top of my forehead. And then highlighter is done. Now I'm going to finally finish my bottom lash line. I'm gonna grab my Nude Mood eyeshadow palette from ColourPop one more time and a 239 brush from MAC. And dipping into Bare to Wear, I'm gonna bring this all along the bottom lash line. And then next I'll be using that darker shade in the palette the au naturel color and then just blending it on top of that first shade. So anything I use in my crease, I'm just bringing it directly down to my bottom lash line. And then going back to my mascara, I'm gonna do a very light coat on my top lashes and my bottom lashes. Okay, mascara is done. Moving on to lips, I'm gonna just blot off my lip conditioner that I had on. And going back to my powder brush, I'm gonna take just a teeny bit of that Laura Mercier powder and press this onto my lips. This will help so much with feathering of your lipstick. So whatever lipstick you choose to wear, and whatever lip liner you choose to wear as well, even though lip liners are obviously long wearing, this is just gonna help to prevent, like if you're sweating or it's hot and humid, 
It's gonna prevent your products from feathering and melting down. It's gonna help a lot. So now I'll be jumping into my lip liner. I'll be using the Makeup Forever Artist Pencil in the color Wherever Walnut. This shade is so pretty. I've been looking to buy this for the longest time and everywhere I go, this shade in particular is sold out. So I'm so happy I finally got it. So I'll be lining my lips with this shade before I go on with my lipstick. Moving on to lipstick, I'll be using the Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet in the color Abstract. This is a beautiful, like, romantic shade. It's not too nude. It's not too bright. It's like a nice, happy in-between where it's not going to be, like, it's not going to overtake the rest of your makeup, but it's going to look beautiful and really flattering in photos and in person. So it's one of those, like, classic shades. So pretty. Can't go wrong with the Chanel lipstick. Last but not least, I'm gonna cover up this pimple on my face. And I'll be using the, this is something I use in my professional makeup kit. It's an incredible concealer. It's obviously a palette. You get multiple shades. It's from Cinema Secrets. Cinema Secrets is a very old school pro makeup brand. If you're at home and you're not a makeup artist, just get a nice like thick full coverage concealer. Like MAC has great thick individual full coverage concealers that will just, you need like a little dot of it and you are good to go. NARS also has their soft matte concealers that come in a pot. I highly recommend those for like spot concealing or for like pimple concealing. They're amazing for that. But I will be taking a little bit of that center shade. A little bit of this guy and a little bit of this guy. Mixing like warm tones with the olive tones that are in that concealer palette. I'm gonna take it on the top of my hand. I'm taking a really small flat brush. This one is from MAC. I believe it's a 232. The numbers are totally worn off, but MAC definitely still carries this brush. And I'm just gonna start to pat that onto my pimple. And then rubbing off the excess of concealer, I'm going to just blend around the edges trying to avoid my mole. And then of course, so it doesn't move and it stays put all day. I'm gonna go back to just a fluffy brush from Real Techniques that I used to contour my nose. I'm gonna take that, dip into a little more of that Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Powder. And I'm going to set my pimple. Just pressing it in. I'm not buffing it and like going crazy. I'm being really precise, which is exactly what you need to do. You need to slow down when you're trying to cover up things like pimples or like even like scars or tattoos, whatever you're trying to cover up. You can't rush through it. It is more tedious. It does involve more patience, so... Take the time to like press those products in and set it. And now we're gonna set our entire face and we'll be good to go. I'll be using the Urban Decay All Nighter Ultra Matte. The reason why I'm grabbing the Ultra Matte version of the All Nighter is because this one in particular says it's, well, it's, they're all long lasting. That's the whole point of like these setting sprays that they're meant to make your makeup last all day and all night. But this one is lightweight, but it also says it has temperature control, which I don't know if I believe it. It might be like a placebo effect where like it says it has temperature control. So mentally it makes me think that my makeup is just not gonna melt down as quick if I get hot or sweaty and, or I'm in humid weather. Either way, it's a great setting spray. It doesn't leave me super matte. So I'm not concerned about it taking away like that pretty luminosity that I have to my skin right now. It's just gonna help to seal the deal and lock in my makeup. So here's the finished look. This is my wedding guest makeup look. I find this to be beautiful and appropriate, still understated, but still glamorous at the same time. It's not gonna outdo the bride or outshine her, which is what you don't wanna do when you're a guest at a wedding. But this makeup look is also beautiful for any special occasion or event. Let me know in the comments if you like this look or if you try it on yourself. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm at Makeup by Nikki Rose, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.